Well, if you've never watched before you buy before, this is Twitch product review show. We get everybody in here to review all sorts of tech gadgets and devices and even some accessories and peripherals. And today, the first one off is Mr. Father Robert. Yeah. What do you have for us? This little honey is the Samsung Galaxy Tab 3 7.0 LTE okay. edition on AT&T. 7.0. Yeah, all right. Put yeah. all those together. It's, it also comes in 8.0 and it, it 10? Has, there's an 8-inch version and there's a 10.1-inch version. So okay. this is the smallest of the, of the three. Uh, it's the newest version of their tab. And, um, well, you know, it's a nice little Android device that also happens to have a really, really kick-ass fast LTE connection. Wonderful. Well, why don't we jump right into your review? The Samsung Galaxy Tab 3 7.0 AT&T LTE edition is a lightweight 7-inch Android 4.2.2 device that links a lightweight tablet to AT&T's 4G LTE wireless service. Measuring 7.4 inches by 4.37 inches by 0.4 inches and weighing just 11 ounces, the Galaxy Tab uses Qualcomm's MSM8930AB 1.6 GHz dual-core processor and sports 1.5 GB of RAM. 16 gigabytes of internal memory, and an expansion slot that can support 64 gigabyte micro SD cards. The 7-inch TFT screen is big and bright, though Galaxy series aficionados may find it somewhat lacking. The screen has a resolution of 1024 by 600 with a pixel density of 170 ppi. That's not bad, but it doesn't compare favorably to devices like Samsung's own Galaxy S4 with a 5-inch Super AMOLED screen running 1920 by 1080 resolution and a pixel density of 441 ppi. In addition to HSPA Plus with enhanced backhaul on the AT&T network, the Galaxy Tab supports dual-band 802.11 ABGN and Bluetooth 4.0. It also features Wi-Di and DLNA for connecting to TVs and media devices, as well as WatchOn, an application that combined with an IR port on the right side of the tablet can remote control your gear. Using the tablet is actually quite intuitive. There is no one-hand operation, but the Galaxy Tab fits comfortably into my hands and was the right shape to be cradled in my palm. Power and volume buttons were easily reached and the speaker provided a surprising amount of sound. The Galaxy Tab features two cameras, a front-facing 1.3 megapixel camera and a 3.0 megapixel sensor on the back. The cameras work well enough for video conferencing and the odd shot, but it's not a strong suit of the Galaxy Tab. What is the strong suit is power. With a fast processor and a decent amount of memory, the Galaxy Tab is quick. The interface is smooth and I didn't see much hesitation or lag while gaming or browsing. Power is provided by a non-user replaceable 4000 mAh battery that in our tests provided a full day of processor and screen intensive activity. It lasted for about 8 hours of Netflix, 7 straight hours of ingress, and multiple days when just used for email and light browsing. In all, the Samsung Galaxy Tab 3 is a well-designed, well-powered tablet that might be just a ticket for someone who wants more functionality than they can get from a phone, but more portability than from a 10-inch tablet. The Samsung Galaxy Tab 3 7.0 AT&T LTE Edition is available now. You can purchase it for $299 or $200 with a two-year contract. Oh, so pretty. Yeah, it is pretty. I mean, this thing is fast. It's undeniably fast, and the battery life is phenomenal. This goes right. all day. Way longer than you think a device with such a big screen should go. Uh, I also like the fact that it does that uh, that wonderful multi-screen thing, and it, you've got enough real estate to do multi-screen. I hooked up a Bluetooth mouse and keyboard to this, and I actually had myself a nice little laptop replacement experience. Nice. Yeah, and, and not only that... The LTE connection on AT&T was actually really, really good. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I, I make fun of AT&T sometimes, but they did it right on this device. It's fast, it's consistent, and uh, I was able to do everything from streaming to broadcasting off of this one device. Now, on the con side, the first thing has to be the screen. It's mm -hmm. it's just, it's below par. We're talking 20, 1024 by 600. That's Yeah, you that's can definitely see a difference wrong. between the two. Yeah, especially on, on such a nice device to put a screen like that, it just, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, it, it's relatively expensive. When you consider the fact that for just a few dollars more, I could get the Nexus 7 which, with a much nicer screen. <laughs> you know, the nicest, arguably the nicest screen in tabletdom with a, a decent <laughs> processor as well. This might be a bit on the pricey side. Now, this is a little bit on the, the long and the tooth side. So hopefully those prices will drop to make this a, a competitive device again. So, 
you know, considering that, I, I gave it a try. It, it's not, it's not, a, it's not a bad device. It's actually a really well designed device. My only problem with it is that there are other devices out there right now that are just a tiny bit more expensive, but much more capable. Yes, I, yeah. I pretty much agree with you. I think this is a really good option for somebody who really needs high end battery life, especially since it lasts so long. It's very important for some people. Right. right. Though, if if your importance is in the screen. You might want to look elsewhere. So exactly, yeah. yeah. Good review. Thank you so much, Padre. And where can people find you? Uh, they can find me here every Monday on <laughs> Twiet this week in Enterprise Tech at noon Pacific time, or they can find me on Know How yes. every Thursday at three o'clock Pacific time. Uh, you know, just come geek out with me. Yay! And we welcome you with open arms Yay. to Know How. I also produce Know How. You can find that at twit.tv/kh.